Since we last met, the academies have been rolling forward. It's a stop-start affair. All systems were going away crazily last um, May, June and July. Would we, won't we, shall we by the 1st of September? That was unrealistic. But we're all just getting all our, all our things organised. So we're coming here, Sue, the uh, deputy head teacher who normally works just down the corridor. It's really like running a race on well, four or five fronts at the moment. <laughs> We're all, all these ideas are sort of jogging along together. The school that we're proposing to merge with, or they want to merge with us, will make its decision on Thursday. We wanted to go and become just a, an academy of 700 rather than an academy of 550, then uh, that possibility is still there. The problem is, is this the right thing for us to be doing? We really don't want the merger to delay going into the academies. We are very much still looking at all the finer points, the VAT, the maternity, the pre, all the personnel details. There's a lot of finance and insurances that need to be set up. We're in the early adopters stage. This is new. The LEA uh, have spoken to us at length, very helpfully really, because I think what they realised is it became very obvious that if a lot of schools leave the local authority, all the financial arrangements they have for buyback arrangements, which schools participate in, that happens, you get to a critical mass of gone, then obviously all their arrangements fall apart. So then if that's Spain, there's a country about there. Oh, there. So it goes up the side of Spain. Some schools will go, and because some schools will go, then the authority will be weakened. So if you take out one, two, that won't make any difference, ten outstanding schools, six outstanding secondary schools out of an education authority, taking out probably six secondary schools, £30 million, then what's left isn't enough to go round. Now we're working with the local education authority to see uh, what services they can provide for us in terms of us approaching them as a private organisation. It really is quite a, a volatile and exciting time. Just about to meet uh, Claire Booth, who is the school bursar, a very key member of the staff. She's actually a chartered accountant. If you go into an academy, you do need someone like this. You can't just have someone who's a bookkeeper. You need someone who's got a, a business brain, and that's what she's got. I think it will give us more autonomy, but I don't think overall there'll be huge differences. The key will be at the beginning to make sure that all the processes and systems are sort of set up properly. The end result is the same, that you know, we're educating the children and we've got to just make sure that our resources are used in the best possible way so that they can have as much as possible for the money that we receive. What happens when you get to five? I think because we have such a strong governing body, I think because we have such a strong head, I think we will be able to manage our um, budget. You are going to be marginally better off, but it's only marginal. The opportunity to protect your budget lies in the real opportunities that being an academy affords you. Now this will be how, how successful they are, will be on the basis of how free we can be in our thinking. Back to your row, can you go and do that now for me please, if you're in the... There is less money about, it's going to be tight. When it's tight, I would prefer to be master of my own destiny to see if we can get out of it. Because the difficulty is, local authorities, they just can't move as quickly as they should be able to. Do you have a new government? There is less money about. There is um, the issue about education in its broadest sense, you know, higher education. We can see the trends there. We can see the trends elsewhere. So I think you've just got to read the writing on the wall and get on with it.